Hey guys, Dave Keller here with Market Misbehavior. The Hindenburg Omen is a widely followed macro technical indicator focusing on three particular components. Earlier in the month of May, the Hindenburg Omen signaled an initial sell signal. I'll show you today those three components, what we would need to see to confirm a sell signal, which has happened at major market tops going back through history. Before we get to the Hindenburg Omen, some key charts to watch. Here's one more thing I wanted to tell you about. I'm a technical analyst, which means I spend hours every day looking at hundreds, if not thousands of charts. But in my own decision making process, it's not purely technical. I actually spend a decent amount of time looking at fundamental factors that are actually driving companies and empowering them to grow uh, for multiple years going forward. I look at macroeconomic data like the Fed and inflation and interest rates to think about how all those factors might impact those stocks and ETFs that I'm looking at. And I also have learned from spending years working with institutional investors that Having a good quantitative model is super important. What a quantitative model does is basically look at the characteristics of successful stocks, looks at all the factors, technical, fundamental, everything, and wraps it into one rating and then allows you to focus on the best opportunities within a particular uh, set of stocks or ETFs. The good news is as an individual investor in 2024, you have access to a pretty decent quantitative model through Seeking Alpha. If you go to marketmisbehavior.com slash Seeking Alpha, you'll be able to take advantage of their quantitative rating. They actually have a pretty sophisticated quant model that is driving their quant rating. You can then cross-reference what we're talking about on this video is looking at the charts of leading stocks, looking for big base breakouts and good technical opportunities, but also look to see if the quantitative model from Seeking Alpha supports the upside potential of those names. So go to marketmisbehavior.com slash Seeking Alpha to find more information. Usually get a better deal for you. It's an affiliate link, which means that helps me make market misbehavior uh, awesome. And we're all happy. So check it out. And let's get back to the charts here. So the Hindenburg Omen has a name that has a very ominous sound and for good reason. A lot of major market tops have occurred after a confirmed Hindenburg sell signal. Today, we're going to talk about the Hindenburg Omen, the three different components, what they're telling us right now, and why we need a confirmation which would line up with previous market tops. Here's a chart of the S&P 500. And on stockcharts.com, there's an indicator. It uses this ticker here, exclamation point, B-I-N-Y-H-O-D. What that basically does is track the components of the Hindenburg Omen. If all three of them are not signaling, it's at a zero. If all three of them are signaling, it's at a positive three. And it's meant to just track those three signals. When all three of them are firing, we have a positive three. That tells us we have at least had an initial signal. Now, we just had this signal here over the last week when all three of the components uh, signaled. And those three components are, number one, the market has to be in an uptrend. Number two, we have to have an expansion in new highs and in new lows. And number three, the breadth has to turn negative. In a minute, I'll show you a chart with all three of those components broken out so you can understand them a little bit more clearly. But first, let's look at the last time that this happened. The last time we had a confirmed sell signal, which means we need to have all three of those components firing two times within one month, right? So within one month of trading, you have multiple signals where all three of them are firing. Last time we had that was at the end of 2021, uh, just before that sell-off through most of 2022, leading into the low in October of 2022, back in December and then uh, of 2021, and then January of 2022, we had multiple um, uh, Hindenburg Omen sell signals all firing, right? So multiple times as the market was still going up, you had this combination of factors. You can see what happened soon after that. So what is this indicator actually tracking? Here's a little more busy chart, but it will give you the three components laid out. So here we have the S&P 500 and I've highlighted in purple. That was that 2021 top we were talking about. You see the other, uh, the previous two times that we had, it was just before the COVID uh, drop in uh, the first quarter of 2020, actually signaled in February of 2020. And before that, July and August of 2019. These uh, panels basically illustrate those uh, those three components. And at the bottom, we have this composite indicator tracking the performance. So number one, the trend needs to be positive. And what Jim Mieka, who originally uh, envisioned and created this indicator and popularized it, uh, a couple different ways we can do it. But uh, based on his work, we are looking at the 50-day rate of change of the New York Composite Index, which on stockcharts.com is dollar sign NYA. I'm showing the uh, S&P 500 here of the New York Composite Index, pretty similar. And basically want, we want a um, the market right now, the New York Composite Index today to be higher than it was 
50 days ago. So basically for the last 10 weeks, the New York Composite Index has been moving up as the general measurement. So number one, we're in an uptrend, which we certainly are by any stretch of the imagination going back for the last uh, couple months uh, for the S&P 500, for the Qs, for the NASDAQ, uh, for the New York Composite Index. Second component, this is an important one, is that you need a, a good number of new highs and new lows. What Jim Aker found as he was uh, you know, analyzing previous major market tops was it wasn't that at the top you had a ton of new highs and it wasn't at the top that you had a ton of new lows telling you stocks were already breaking down. You actually had a lot of both. There's this uh, uh, pattern of indecision, which often, ha often happens at the end of a bull market phase, right? Everything's kind of working. But then all of a sudden you have this bifurcation where some stocks are still kind of working in a big way. Some stocks are actually starting to not work in a big day, in a big way. Does that sound familiar at all with what we're experiencing here as we wrap May of 2024? 100%, right? You have those growth mega cap names like a Netflix, like NVIDIA, making new all-time new time highs, Meta, Alphabet, all of those ripping to the upside. You have plenty of stocks that are just not working. You don't have to look much further than consumer staples or... Um, some uh, energy names that have rotated lower, some uh, consumer discretionary names that have been in consistent downtrends, some you know media or entertainment names, communication services like Disney that have just had these horrible charts. So you actually have this indication right now that some things are working and some things are some things are very much not. So what this indicator, the second component, actually tracks is the uh, number of stocks or the percent of stocks making new 52-week highs and the percent of stocks making new 52-week lows. A couple different ways people tend to measure this particular component. What we are doing here uh, using the stock charts methodology is at least 2.5% of the NYSE listings are making a new 52-week high and at least 2.5% are making a new 52-week low on the same day. And if that happens on the same day, second component is a thumbs up. The third component is looking at market breadth and basically the McClellan oscillator needs to go below zero. The McClellan oscillator is basically a measure of market breadth. It's looking at the advanced decline line on the S&P 500, looking at the general rate of change, basically using the exponential moving averages of that advanced decline data. And if it is above zero, that means the breadth overall is supportive on the tactical time frame. The McClellan oscillator is above zero and then tips back below. That tells you the, the, uh, the breadth is going from more positive to more negative. And so when that third component happened uh, over the last week, that completes the third component. That's why the uh, composite indicator uh, for the McClellan oscillator went to positive three suggesting we do have an initial sell signal. Now, we did get an initial sell signal back in February. We actually did a video on this channel talking about that initial sell signal and what it potentially would mean, but we made the clear point, which I'll make again now. The key with this Hindenburg moment is that you need to have multiple signals within about a month of each other. There's different ways people tend to measure it. We go with about a calendar month, so about 30 days or 20 trading days. We would need the indicator to reset, and then we would need it once again to uh, to signal uh, a sell signal. So what would need to happen going into June, if you think we're now sort of mid-late May, we've gotten that initial signal, what would need, we need to see over the next three or four weeks to complete and have a valid uh, Hindenburg Omen sell signal like we did at the end of 2021? Well, number one, we would need the uh, rate of change to go back positive. It's actually still slightly negative as we end uh, the month of May for the last 50 days. would not take much to, uh, to make that uh, a positive number. We just needed to be above zero for the last 50 days, and then it could uh, once again um, uh, uh, reinitiate that signal. So number one, rate of change has to be back positive. We'll, uh, you know, pretty much uh, pretty clear that that would happen if we get any rebound in uh, stocks. Number two, we would have to have once again an expansion in new highs and new lows, which means stocks, some stocks are going to have to keep working. Some stocks are very much going to have to not keep working to validate that second component. The third component, the McClellan oscillator needs to go back above zero. It wouldn't take much uh, of positive breadth rotation in the short term to turn that oscillator back positive because it's very sensitive. It's very tactical, very short term oriented. So a quick pop back higher would re be able to reinitiate and a turn back below the zero line would be that third component. So this chart is an important one to watch as we go into June. What you have to remember is that if you look back for the last five years, we've had a major market top every summer, June, July, or August, we've had a top. Maybe this initial sell reading that we had from the, McClell or from the um, uh, Hindenburg Omen Earlier in the month of May is that first signal. We have a second signal in June. That could signal that we are very, very close at or near a major market top. So keep an eye on this chart 
see if and when those signals occur. For Market Misbehavior, I'm Dave Keller. Be well, stay safe, have a good one.